about losing my job. I really wasn't bothered. But um, what bothered is, is what she said to us. Like that little comment about, mm, she might have the shits, but she's managing to pull more than you are. And the reason it got to us was, I know why she said it. I know she said it explicitly to hurt me feelings. And I always think that's horrible when someone intentionally says something to hurt you. Because around the time I lost my job, um, I mentioned that I lived with someone who I really, really loved in Newcastle. That is true. Honestly, thought I'd met the man in my dreams. Absolute love of my life. Swept us off my feet. Spent all my time with him. Absolutely besotted with this boy. And I was really scared to move to London and leave him up in Newcastle. We've barely spent a day apart in nearly four years. And I was like, oh, do you think it's going to be OK? Do you think it's going to work? It's like, long distance, it's tricky, isn't it? And he went, hey, don't you be worried at all. I don't know what you're bothered about, Lauren, because absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I thought that was a lovely, lovely thing to say, but very quickly learned it's fucking bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> absence did not make his heart grow fonder. Absence just made his dick wander. That is all that happened <laughs> in that particular instance. And I was devastated. I cannot believe I got that upset over a boy. I'm 300 miles from home, don't have any friends in London, don't know a single person in London, totally on my own, absolute heartbroken. I'm just left all scooped out. That's what I felt like. He'd scooped me inside out and I'm left like a sad little pumpkin, just left to rot in London. I was absolutely heartbroken. I know for a fact, some of you are probably sitting thinking, grow up. Grow up, it's a boy. You're going to get your heart broken so many more times, get over it, you've been dumped so fuck. <laughs> no, no, no. I am a strong enough woman to be okay when I get dumped, but I did not get dumped. What my beloved boyfriend, Jamie, of four years did was ghost me. Do we know what ghosting is? It's not like Casper the Friendly Ghost. It's much more like <laughs> Casper the Cunty Ghost. That is a lot more, a lot more what it's like. So rather than him give me a ring or arrange to meet up or send us an email or Skype us and be like, hey, mate, I... I really love you, but long distance, not working for me. Not at all. Like, how about maybe we spend some time apart, just be friends? Could have dealt with that. Would have been fine with that. But first, he stopped texting back. Stopped answering his texts. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not dead clingy. He's got a life. He's got friends. He's got a job. I don't need to hear from him every single day. But after a few days of not hearing from him, I was like, I'll give him a ring. Hear his voice. That would be nice. And his phone didn't go through. I was like, what an idiot. Broke his phone, hasn't he? What a, what a numpty. I'll, I'll drop him a little Facebook message, check if everything's OK. And when I went on Facebook, his profile wasn't there. And I was like, hmm, that's, that's weird, isn't it? But I'm a woman, I'm psychotic, I've got a second profile under a false name. So I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Logged into that one and up pops the fucker. There he is. And I was like, hang on. So he's not, he's not deleted his Facebook. He's, He's deleted me off Facebook. This is, this is a funny prank that I'm not understanding. I wonder what's happening here. And then finally, after about a week or so, my phone rang. It was my best mate from up here. And I was like, oh, just, just wondering, um, have you seen or heard from Jamie at all? Because she lived quite nearby. She went, oh, oh, I would have thought you knew. I was like, thought I knew what? She went, well, he moved out of your flat last week. I'm not going to lie, Newcastle, at this point, alarm bells started to ring. <laughs> I was slightly suspicious by this occasion. So I desperately tried to get in touch with them, tried to get in touch with these friends. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He completely just cut me out of his life overnight. Like, I didn't mean anything to him. Like, we hadn't meant anything as a couple. And that's why they call it ghosting. They just, like, disappear out of your life. And that is why I was so devastated. Because I thought, what have I done? What if I must have done something horrible for him to do that to me? I remember the last thing he said to us before I got on the train from Central Station to go to London. He was like, I'm so proud of you for following your dreams, princess. I am so proud of you. I really do love you. And I'm sat there thinking, how can you do this to somebody who you love? Like, when I change dentists and forget to tell the old one I'm not coming back, I get quite upset he might miss us. <laughs> and I've got no strong feelings for that guy whatsoever and I was so so upset and I had the worst first year in London because I was fixated on what did I do wrong what the hell did I do wrong why did he leave us what could I have done differently to have changed things and I really got worked up over it and then after about a year I was like Lauren Patterson this is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous you rely so much on other people to feel happy that's what that breakup taught us how much I rely on other people to feel good about myself and I thought you can't have that you need to be able to feel good about yourself all on your own. You need to pull your head out your ass and really learn to be happy. Learn how to be like comfortable in your own skin. Learn how to feel good about yourself. How do you do that? How do you even begin to do that? I'll tell you how you do it. You go on Facebook 
and you look up all the girls who you went to school with. <laughs> and you find out how their lives are going. Because <laughs> what can possibly make you feel worse about yourself than comparing yourself to lives of others on the internet? Holy fuck, I did not feel good. I found out after a bit of searching that I was one of the only girls from my year at school who wasn't pregnant, married, or already got kids. At 23. 23, when I told that in Edinburgh, a man at the front clearly tried to instill some confidence in us and he started a round of applause. <laughs> which was quickly shut down by a man at the back who just went, it's nothing to be proud of. And I was like, Dad, I've told you, you'll get your grandkids at some point. <laughs> Please. <laughs>